Okay, hello, so this is Haven Didco, and I'm just going to do a very small tutorial. I was asked about um, if it was possible to bring textures from uh, Marvelous Designer into uh, Blender for Second Life, and although it is possible, you'll see that um, it's not um, as complete as we'd like it to be, and that's because of the limitations between the two programs together. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, this is just a little uh, thing I threw together, and I'm going to create three different fabrics for it. Right now I have the basic fabric one, basic fabric number two, and I'm going to add a third one by clicking up here. So it doesn't really matter what the names of them are right now. They can just be whatever. Uh, the first fabric I'm going to bring and I'm going to drag onto this front piece. The second fabric, I'll click on it and I will drag it to the second piece here. Uh, the third one I'm going to click on and I'm just going to drag it to the arm straps that I've got going on in the pattern window here. And you do have to drag it to each one individually. Now what I have the ability to do is to bring um, textures into these fabric slots. So the first one I'll bring in, I'll just put here. And there we go. I'll put that one there. See, you can see right away where the fabric goes, so you know if you have the right slot. And then I'll bring that up to this one. And I'll bring one to the top. Okay, so there we go. What happens is that it brings it in a uh, full size. And um, if you come over to this little first square here, you can click on it and then click on a pattern piece. And you can take this pattern piece, and actually let me get a little bit better one for um, this one here. I'll show you why I changed that in a minute. Okay, so on this one, you'll see that you can grab any of these dots going around the circle. And as you pull it, you can stretch or you can... Uh, shrink the texture whichever way you like you can put your mouse somewhere in the middle and you can grab it and drag it around and this allows you to see exactly what it's going to be like on the dress uh, you can even take this and like I said you can make it much smaller if you wanted to I'm going to leave it a little bit big and then I can see how it matches up with what I've got on the other side and I can keep doing this to see if I ever find a spot that I like it in and that's okay so the top one I did separately and that's because um, these you can take and watch if I change one they all change um, actually why didn't that one change for me? Let me make sure that I have the right fabrics in here. And there we go. You can see that each one of them, I'm trying to get a good different thing here. Each one of them can be moved and positioned on their own. So let's see if I can find, there we go, red color. So they can all be moved and positioned on their own. <clears throat> but when, oh, you can also rotate each one on its own. So you can take this and, whoops, I do it on one that you can see. As you can see, I can rotate that and none of the other ones are affected. I can rotate this. But if I scale this up or down, you'll see that all of them get scaled up or down by um, doing this. Alright, so 
They, uh, again, they all scale up and down on their own or uh, as one fabric, but you can rotate and uh, adjust each one individually. Now, when you take this and you're going to export this, you go to File and Export, and we'll just call this um, Fabric Test. Whoops without the W and click Save. Um, when you go to save it, you'll see down here it says save with texture files dot zip. By default that's unchecked. So you want to check that and then click OK. Now what you're going to get is you're going to get a zip folder um, and so you will Click that and you'll extract all of your uh, files from there, which is what I've done here. And you'll see that I have my object and the three different uh, textures that I used. So now, when I go to Blender and I import that OBJ, you'll see, let's see, um, where did it go? There it is. And here's the OBJ, and I import it. Uh, there you can see I have it. And if I come into this um, window here, the properties panel, and I go to the shading section down at the bottom, and I turn on textured solid, you can see all those fabrics have come in and they are um, displayed as they were in Marvelous Designer. There is one difference and the difference is is the placement of them and actually the rotation of them. None of that stays. It comes into um, um, Blender let me go ahead and turn this around real quick. It comes in um, as it did when you first brought the fabric in. That's, you can see it's bigger here than it is here um, because it comes in the original size instead of the adjusted size. So any adjustments you do to the fabric don't come through with the actual um, object, just the fabrics do. So uh, what's really nice about this is that making them different fabrics in Marvelous Designer creates different materials here inside of, well, actually it didn't, let's see, there we go, it does, I didn't have the right thing selected. It comes in the different um, materials already so that if I take this into Second Life right now, each of these um, areas would be uh, separately texturable. Uh, if I go into object mode on this, or edit mode, and all of it's selected, it looks a little odd. One of the fabrics is there. Uh, it's kind of random sometimes which one shows up initially. But if I select only the front in edit mode, then the texture associated with that one actually shows up with that one and this is nice because this allows me to line things up if I want to so let's just say back here I want this line not to cross over uh, like this I want it fully on the front piece and so I can take all of my UVs here and I can simply move them over if I want to, like that. And now when I export this mesh, this texture, or any texture, will fit onto it just like this UV does to the texture now. And if I click on the back one, I mean, you can see I get the back texture uh, with it, and that allows me to um, grab all of these. And if I want to, whoops, 
what I can do is I can enlarge this so I can get a tighter pattern. So select all of them and hit scale. And as I make that larger, then you see I get the tighter pattern here. Of course, you're going to probably want to use a seamless if you do something like that. And again, the same thing with the shoulders up here. All of these ones. So let me go here and select these. And you can see I've got all six of my little shoulder pieces. And again, I can decide to just take one of them if I want and move it. Or I can move another one. So anything that you want to do. Um, now when you take, like I said, that object into uh, Second Life, you can... Um, uh, bring in your textures and they'll fit just the way that you see that they do here. Uh, don't forget that also you can export your UV layout and you can um, also save these images. So you could go, when this image is selected, you can go here and click on save Im image as you like, but you've already got it on your computer. So anyways, um, have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe and happy creating.